Okay, so guys, thank you so much oh, for doing great. this. I oh, really yeah. appreciate it. It's so very, we, very formal for a it's podcast. It's so though. formal. Just to be like, okay. you know, yeah, no, we're, in our hoodies. But, but our show is so informal. <laughs> yo, yo. So uh, we have the longest running anchor team on television, mm -hmm. right? Are we? 15 years. 15 yeah. years. Yeah. I think we actually are the longest running. And three of us. Okay, so um, I had a couple of questions. I want to talk about our first impressions of each other mm -hmm. and what we think now and what uh, we've learned a lot. Do you like that? Sure. So you want me to start with my first impression? Oh, this sure. is, wow. Okay, so <clears throat> Joe, <laughs> uh -oh. uh, she cleared I thought the throat. You, I thought you were, I immediately noticed that you were brilliant oh, nice. uh, and like nothing I've seen on TV, nice. mm -hmm. which I thought, my God, I've done every type of show on TV mm -hmm. and it's also so formatted. Yeah. And this was just an explosion of just craziness and wildness and brilliance. And so, this. and I remember though that you didn't get that, that I had to tell you that mm -hmm. this was really good. Mm -hmm. And after the first five minutes of Morning Joe, <laughs> I, I turned to him and I said, I have to tell you something. And what I told him was, this is going to be the biggest political show on TV and it's gonna last as long as we want it to last. Mm. Should I not say that? I did say that, can you wow. believe that? That's amazing. That was my first impression. I mean, five yeah. minutes in, I was just saying, I wonder if I can get another coffee, can yeah. <laughs> so, but anyway. No, it's for, uh, that was, my, and with you, Willie, I, I don't know if you remember me saying this, but Willie had this charm and this ability to sort of glue everything together, even when it was all falling apart. And I said, you're going to be a big deal and you're going to have your own show. I do remember you saying that. Which okay. I, well, by the way, I was a producer at the time, yes. so I didn't know what you were talking I'm about. I'm like, you're going to be a big deal. You're going to have your own network show. <laughs> you're going to like surpass us. And what, am I always right, guys, or she's, what? She's got my gut is good. So right the only problem was my, my, about right. myself, I had very low confidence, well, but. Can I go next? Yes. yes. So with Mika, so my dad, as you know, was at mm -hmm. CBS. So right. I used to watch you on Sunday morning. Oh, I love that And you that were on show. 60 Minutes. Oh. So to me, you were like this journalist, journalist who interviewed leaders and celebrities and you could do anything. So I held you in very high esteem. Wow. And then Joe, I got to know you through Scarborough Country. Right. Oh my when God. When truly, again, I just, people don't even remember this. I was a producer behind the scenes and Joe was like, hey, come do Holly Weird. Right. Hey, go do a story for me. And so it's that thing of someone telling you something about yourself that you didn't know or didn't believe possible. You just discovered come and do it. both of us. You, you well, kind of saw it. You all were doing whatever, but I mean, it is, um, I mean, I think the thing I always tell people about the beginning of the show, well, first of all, I'm talking about the night before when I asked Mika if she'd be on the show uh, the next morning, uh, and she, like, insulted me, talking about Scarborough <laughs> Country. Um, I did but, the cut-ins, the 30-second cut-ins. I yeah. will, it was Never. a minute, but I said, can we cut that down to 30 seconds? <laughs> oh. I, was, I was looking at the minutes, and I just, I, I just wanted to keep, keep, keep the ratings up. Uh, but I remember the thing that is so incredible is I remember we were talking to each other. It was a great conversation. You remember Bender mm -hmm, at the camera? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And he's like, five. Ten seconds. Four. And he was yelling, and we just kept talking. And we all were like saying, let's just keep talking yeah. to each other. He said, go, and he was freaking out. And we just kept talking. Yep. And then looked up and said, oh, hello. Welcome to the show. And at that point, I was like, I knew. I mean, this is, you got to admit, this is really weird. The, the chemistry between, because people always would write the stories about Mika and my chemistry. The chemistry was All three me, of us. you, and Mika. And it was like that. It yeah. was instantaneous. Like I, I had seen you and I thought that, okay, this guy, this is a guy that like, this is gonna be great. We're gonna have a lot of fun. I really didn't know Mika. I'd never seen her. And so I, I really was kind of surprised to be honest with you, you were able to move with it right. the way you were able to move I with it. I saw it right away. I saw the show right away as a complete success. I saw your success mm -hmm. absolutely right away from the moment I watched you on television and yours exponential. And I think it's so interesting women are good at that <laughs> for their spouses, yeah. for their colleagues, for the people they care about, but not so much for themselves. I never no. really knew if I was going to make it. And I was replaced a lot in the beginning. Well, you know, at the beginning, I, I was pulled out at the beginning. They, they and almost want, fired. They didn't want Mika. I mean, at the beginning, she was like, no, it's not going to happen. Yeah. And everybody was saying it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. And I know we kept saying, well, there's not a show without Mika. So you're going to have to put Mika in there. And they finally just gave up.
after after they had like three or four different people that tried out and that didn't end well for any of them. Well, I, that's true, and I know there was some eye rolling about me too. They said, "Who is it? What's his deal?" When well, he was a producer, and now he's on the air. Some to my face, some behind my back. But here we are, 15 minutes later. But to your point about the informality of it, I had to maybe you too, Mika, had to unlearn some things about yes. TV. About well, this isn't the way it works. And Joe's point was exactly. <laughs> Exactly. exactly. Yeah. It's time to move on from the old formats. And and you can't recreate what you're talking about, which is the fact that we got along right away. There's so many shows that say, we're going to try your format. We're right. going to get people around a table. It's going to be loose. We're going to play music. We're going to do all those things. And it doesn't work doesn't because work. if the people don't work, the show doesn't work. And we worked immediately. I remember Mika told me like a couple weeks after we first started that she got a lot of phone calls from friends who she'd worked in the business with for 20 years saying, okay, where did you work with those guys before? Right. Were y'all up in Hartford? Hey, were you in another market? Like what? Cause, cause again, it was so natural. Everybody assumed that we had known each other forever and we'd really just met. Well, the, the, the ripping of the script was I think Huge. kind of a, yeah. a big moment for the show in the beginning. And that was when the story of Paris Hilton was given to us as the lead. Yep. And you and I kind of made, uh, you know, what is it? Physical comedy out of ripping yeah. up the script and burning it. I saw that you going, going, don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> Come on, Lily. When the lighter came out. <laughs> no, I don't know about that. Oh, I got in trouble for lighting the lighter. I almost uh, got fired for that. Um, got pulled in and told that I need to listen to the producer and that was a bad call on my part. And then that afternoon... Five million YouTube hits yeah. later, they were like, wait a second, this is huge. My father was in... He was in Croatia, Croatia at a conference. A press oh. conference for him. And he came out, he's like, and this is this why I believe the Balkans will forever uh, <laughs> be a critical. And the first question was, uh, what's your comment about your daughter tearing up the Paris Hilton script? <laughs> he was like, what? What is this? Like he was so it spread around the world. deeply offended that here he is talking world peace. And halfway across the world in Croatia, they were asking him a question. Yeah. about Mika in Secaucus, New Jersey, tearing up a Paris Hilton <laughs> Working freelance. But that was actually a turning point. If you think yeah. like now, thinking back on the idea that someone earnestly gave us a story about Paris Hilton mm -hmm. as a news story, given what we've been through the last five years, but even more yeah. than that, the idea that that would even be a part of the broadcast without us winking or laughing, laughing about it. That, yeah. was a, that was a big moment. I don't think just for our show, but for, for news. You yeah. know, it was. Um, even though I was sort of at a time of low confidence, I'd been fired from CBS and I didn't really do so well in the contract negotiations and uh, wrote a book about it, this Know Your Value. But uh, I, I will say, I was like, you know, get fired again. I don't care. Right. I am not taking this seriously. And just, you know what? It felt like such a relief to say this is crap. Yeah. This is this. We're not doing this. You, you, you know, it's so weird, Willie. There are a lot of people. I won't mention their names. There are a lot of people around NBC who were not kind mm. to any of us. No. Uh, and about two months into the show, suddenly they wanted to be on the show. Yeah. Their guests that we have on still, <laughs> we couldn't get them to return the calls. Oh yeah. And I still see it where somebody said, "Well, I don't. I don't wake up early. They come on the show." And then they're flooded with phone calls, with texts, the likes of which they just don't see on, on just about any other show here. And I think that was my biggest surprise early on mm -hmm. with what we had. In, and you probably saw it even more because you were in New York and you knew yeah. people in New York. But what kind of amazes me is that this, uh, as Roger Bennett might say, this crap show <laughs> uh, where we just talk for three hours, it immediately really connected with influencers in Manhattan and DC and across the country. I was always shocked that, you know, suddenly invitations, I, we never do anything. I never do anything at night, but suddenly invita you get all these invitations come and, you know. You can feel it. Yeah. See, see the premiere of Mad Men, come right. see da 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 da. And I'm like, wait, wait. I, we did go to that. I, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm the host of Scarborough Country. <laughs> Everybody hates me. But wasn't it crazy to you how quickly we tell the, the Meryl Streep story? Yeah. How quickly suddenly you're like, oh my God. Yeah. Like everybody's watching this that, that 
you know, we know in our circle. And I had no relationship to that. You guys had been on TV. You've been hosting shows for some time. I was behind the scenes as a producer. And all of a sudden, this was in 2008. I was at a party in New York, a big party. It was not like a super exclusive party, but um, Meryl Streep was at this party. Mm -hmm. And I was with somebody else and we walked up behind her and said, oh, no, don't, she, I don't, she doesn't want to be by. She turns around and Meryl Streep sees who I'm with. So, oh, hello. And then she sees me. This is early in the morning. Mm -hmm. <gasps> <laughs> morning Joe. Uh, maybe she didn't know my name. She's wow. Morning Joe. Yeah. And so that there were those moments where you said, "Okay, we're we're breaking through into some places that yeah. was totally new for me, but spoke to what was happening on our our little show that's not been going on for 15 well, and, years." And you know that still happens. Like um, so, Paula Scher, who is a legend, uh, who is the legendary uh, graphic arts person, graphic artist. She's just. She's otherworldly, right? I've been a huge fan of hers for a long time. Uh, and I wanted to give her a call and get her working on a project for the show uh, just a couple months ago. And it was just one of these things where I like would call her, but I said, wait, how do I, what, how do I, I'm not, she's not gonna talk to me. Like she's like, and I'd ask Mika, I go, Mika, how do I, what do I say to her? And finally Mika's like, just call her. <laughs> you know, she didn't do it that way. But I, so I finally called and when I finally got her on the phone, she come back, she goes, is this, is this really, come on, this isn't like Joe Scarborough, is it? <laughs> like you are, she said, morning Joe's on every day in our house. And you sit there going, oh my God. Yeah. Like she's like, she's sitting there going, why are you calling us? And of course, um, it's still, it's like a trip. It's still a trip that so many people that you you respect from a distance for some reason watch this show it's, and and it's something that mika saw from the very beginning you know what i really see it is when i do my sunday interviews for my sunday show on nbc with the biggest stars yeah. in music and and um and acting and hollywood and everything else they always lead with morning joe and they've you know they've seen our show and the sunday show and they know that it's a, a good place to sit and do an interview but it's the kind of guest that's engaged in politics and smart and has something to say. And that is, honestly, I think even when we're booking, they go, oh yeah, for Morning Joe, yeah, I'll do that. Because they know it'll be a different kind of conversation. Right. Then, two weeks ago, uh, I did an interview with Liam Neeson on the Upper West Side. Mm -hmm. He walks in, Morning Joe. That no way! So cool. He watches oh, yeah. Morning Joe. See, this Come is the sort of thing He's a New Yorker, so awesome. almost to a man. Oh. Almost every guest comes in and has so, something to say about Morning Joe. And that this is, is so the, cool. I mean, you, the concept and was yours. You pitched this to Phil Griffin, found us, and this incredible platform has allowed us to have impact in ways that we choose to. And Willie, That's you do right. so much work with veterans. And obviously I've been building Know Your Value. You've been watching me build this thing. And we're doing now the Forbes 50 over 50 and having the International Women's Day event. So I, I've learned so much through the years talking to the family that we've built with Mike Barnacle and all the Morning Joe family members, how to know your value, which men do, how to communicate it effectively, which men do. Um, but the one thing I did know early on, and I said it in one of the first press conferences for our show, one of our first sort of upfronts, mm -hmm. and that was, this is the job that I want for as long as I can have it. I don't want to go anywhere else. Usually in this business, you're managing up. You're trying to get to the Today Show. Or you're trying to get to some other job or some other chair that someone else sits in. Yeah. And we've created our own chairs and I've well, always just wanted to be right here and I'm so grateful And by the way, this all sounds very self-congratulatory. We've never talked about any of this no. before. So this for, is gratitude. forgive us if, if this, it sounds that way, but this is just all gratitude. I know for all of us, we feel so lucky to do that. But but Willie, this is what, what we were talking about a couple weeks ago. Yeah. I mean, I've always been restless and I always, you know, his that, mind you know, is sure. went from law to music to Congress. And I it was in Congress and I go, too many people here, gotta leave. <laughs> and then I get out of that, then oh, then TV. And it was always very restless and I wanted to be moving every four years. I, I've got to say with this show for the first time in my life, I'm just like, this is it. I mean, I'm I'm so grateful if they'll have me. Mm. This is it. I want to stay here. You and I have been talking about this lately. Yeah. It does feel that way. And for me, it only happened a couple of years ago where I mm -hmm. got to the place of like, wait a minute. There is no other show on TV, and I've said this to you, where you can come and sit down 
and be your 100% true self. There's always some convention or you have to get to break because we've got a hard break, all the things that make TV a little bit awkward and not real. Yeah. We don't have any of that. We just come on and we talk and the balance of this and I get to do the Sunday show, which is a totally different gear. Right. It's hard to imagine what else you could want. And, and I think we've, you know, it took us 15 years to get here, but here we are. Yeah, exactly. I want to say one other thing about people who watch us, because this is just a pet peeve of mine. I remember when Donald Trump was watching our show uh, during the campaign in 16, everybody would be like, oh, what's it like having a presidential candidate? We were like, well, it's the same as always. And they're like, oh, come on, you you sound sick. And they'd always write something snide, like, oh, they act mm-hmm. like this is like not new for them. Well, it wasn't new for us. I mean, it's from the very beginning. We would come on at 6 o'clock. At 6.02, we'd have the Clinton campaign texting us. At 6.04, David Axelrod from the Obama campaign mm-hmm. would be texting us. People were watching us in the White House. The Obama White House watched us. The New York Times editors watched us. Like everybody, everybody, we've seen this through the years. And it's amazing. Nobody is rushing to us now talking about the current administration, which watches us every day. It's, so that's just sort of a pet peeve of mine that, that I was like, no, it's not, you know, they're like, you know, it was such a big deal. I go, you do understand that Mika, when she was nine years old, was hanging out in the White House. <laughs> right. when, I, when we say it's not a big deal for a politician to, like, listen to us and call us, it's just not a big deal. Just one more thing before we go for our Mika Straight Up audience. You were sitting next to me when Trump tweeted about my face. Remember the yes. face shame? Everybody wants to hear this story. Yes. So, no, I, I keep getting asked about it. So you're in the newsroom. <laughs> you wandered off, John McCain. I was downstairs and, uh, lying down, stretching so, out. Yeah. And, and all of a sudden, Willie, I just remember you're on your phone, and all of a sudden you turn it from me. Like, I can't Tell us this story. see I remember it. it was right before the end of the show. Show's over at 9. It was yeah. 8.56 or something. I said, my, let me hold this till we get off the air. What was my reaction before we, we got a wrap up? Do you remember? You took it much better than I think most people <laughs> would. You laughed. Yeah, I laughed hysterically. You were so worried. Everybody had their well, head everybody down. Was. We walked in the yeah. newsroom. Yeah. Everybody head yeah. down. And it was uh, oh, She laughed Guys, thank you so much. All right. Uh, thank you. Th- and thank you for sharing our story with the Mika Straight Up audience. I love it. Thank you, Mika Straight Up audience. Bank of America is dedicated to bringing diverse women talent into the company and to supporting the economic empowerment of women around the world recognizing the vital role women play in driving economic growth. Bank of America helps women make connections to build their businesses and make meaningful contributions to local communities. Through partnerships with multiple organizations, Bank of America has helped more than 75,000 women entrepreneurs access mentoring and the capital they need to lead, create positive change, and grow their businesses. To learn more, visit bankofamerica.com slash women. What would you like the power to do? Copyright 2021 Bank of America Corporation.